are at Urban Shaman. Uh, we are going to take a tour of the Buffy St. Marie exhibit with curator Natasha DeRoche Lowenthal. She's going to show us around. Come on. Natasha! Hi. I'm good. I'm so excited to be in here. So this this is where it all began. It did, yeah. This, this is little, little old beige box. Yeah, this is where she, she began her exploration of visual art through the digital medium. How old is this computer? This computer is circa 1984, but she actually purchased it before then, because 1984 is really the inaugural announcement of it as a home computer. Yeah. But Buffy had purchased it previous to its big debut. Ahead of her time. A Macintosh 128K. <laughs> well, and if you look at the back to it, the model number is 0001. Oh my. God. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So, and she used this for what? What was, what was this in her process? Well, she used it to create some of the pieces that you see in the show. We're gonna go and she check also out. used it to um, explore communities that she wouldn't normally have access to. She used it for email, she used it for all kinds of things, and eventually she developed a, an entire education program through digital. All beginning here. Okay. Oh, yeah. So one of the earliest pieces of hers, this is kind of like the early pieces section. One of her earliest pieces is depicted here and Buffy's uh, pieces are dated in a range because she didn't just leave a piece finished until it was finished. She reworked it as the uh, technology evolved. She did various things that other people weren't even aware was possible too. She used some of the external technology like scanners and things like that to, to rework images and to implement scanned images into her digital art. So she really was like one of the first people to really even take digital art to that level as well. Who even thinks of, do, like, that's what I'm always confused or you know, impressed by, I guess, uh, is you know these creatives. And it's like, what would even make you think to do some of these things? It's one thing to see something and then emulate it. Oh, I like that. And then you try to do it. But to just imagine it all, it's pretty. Well, that's why it's really important that we, we really pen her name down in the history of digital art. Because who knows who was doing this at the same time? But I can tell you that she was one of, if not the first, to take a computer and use it to create art for art's sake. Yeah. OK, what next? Um, well, we see some of the progressions. The other thing that uh, everybody forgets is that printing was not what it is today. Not everybody could print digital art. Right. So it was just as challenging for her to establish a relationship and, and source out appropriate printers for her pieces. It was very, very interesting. And that, that's another thing that's quite amazing about her choice in scale is that knowing that it wasn't something she could just walk down to the corner yeah. printer and... Yeah, and you're not going to Staples in no. uh, 1989 no. and having Costco didn't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> she was really generous to Buffy's always very um, giving of herself and she offered us some hand-drawn sketches and some of these are really delicate as you can see. They've been through hurricanes oh. or floods or <laughs> various challenges, but it just kind of adds another dimension to that. That I love, hey? Some of these are costume designs for a project that didn't happen. She, mm. she was asked to kind of sketch out some costume design. Skinny rabbit scraps must be wrapped around string or something. I love that, right? <laughs> Little glimpses into the mind, that's, um, yeah. There's lots to see here, that's for sure. Uh, okay, so this diptych is an example of her progression about how she doesn't ever um, consider a piece necessarily finished, that something is always in progress. And she has two versions of this because she couldn't decide really which one she liked best. And so why, when it's digital art, that's kind of this, this added perk that you, you have a chance to rework things. Yeah. And she does that with her music too. She'll re-record the same song in a different feel. Yeah. And so it has just a whole new connection to a different audience when she does that. This is just magnificent, hey? Yeah, this is an impactful piece. 
and it's one of the most profound pieces to see in person. So I'm really anxious for people to be able to come and stand in front of it because it really is, it, it really um, speaks to the old colonial portraits as well. It's, it's kind of got this satire and yet it's got this ghostly uh, presence about it and it's really, really one of my favorite pieces that she's ever done. Oh yeah, it's, I think, and it's funny because somebody will be watching this on their TV screen and thinking, oh, that's really neat. And you, you do, it does lose something if you're not actually in person and seeing absolutely. the size and scope of it too well, and the, the, and the incredible detail. Right, and the scale is absolutely intentional. Uh, artists don't pick a size by accident. She really did want to have the impact of the portraiture of colonial times. She, it's kind of, she wants it framed ornately like you, you would see the blue boy friend. You know, yeah. like it's really yeah. quite, quite an interesting view and it certainly has a huge impact when you see indigenous faces reflected in that way. It's too bad. It's COVID times and this place isn't packed oh, right no. now and people who are, can appreciate it, right? Well, and that really is always... Buffy's goal is to connect with people. It really is. And she takes everything as a platform to speak about the hard conversations, to bring levity to some of the intensity of the subject matter. There's a lot of humor in her work. There's a lot of humanity in her work. And there's just so much beauty and intelligence there, too. Well, that humor is part of... No, no, what keeps us all going, right? Absolutely, that definitely does. And, it, and the resilience not, has a yeah. lot of humor. It definitely feeds her resilience. And it's, uh, it's coming from a place that really is rooted in the indigenous teachings of you know, humility and, and family and respect. And she really lives that way. And so it's really quite amazing to see how she has taken it and implemented it into every aspect of her career. Mm -hmm. We always talk about role models, but nowadays role models come in these tiny little compartments mm -hmm. and, and you have to separate the artist from the art in mm -hmm. order to really so true. achieve the value in the art. That's not the case with Buffy. She, um, she personifies what it is to walk the talk. Yeah. And generations and counting, right? It's not yeah. a, a role model at the time. It's like she's... That's just, right. Yeah, it's a universal approach to, to being an authentic artist. Love it. What else do we have over here? Well, we have some handwritten lyrics. Um, we also have a poster that she used one of her images to... She lent her image to the cause of AIDS awareness. And so... She did that with quite a few of her pieces of art. She, she kind of really took it and implemented it into her activism. And just a sense of community that's always injected in her work. And we come to, I think what's most important to me to communicate with this exhibit is her place in the history of, of fine art. We always talk about, we know that women and people of color, people who identify as women, are underrepresented mm -hmm. in the history of art and technology. Right, and, yeah. And what do we do with that? We create a meme and we quote the numbers and everybody goes, oh, that's terrible. But what we have to do with it is we have to start putting an identity to the people who really were innovators. Yeah. And so speaking her name in the sentence of innovator of digital art is really powerful from an art standpoint, from a cultural standpoint, and from a science and technology standpoint. Because she's an incredibly intelligent artist. Oh, absolutely. And this is just stunning. I love yes. the hands. This one is called Hands, the Coming of the Digital Age. And it was one of the first pieces that she lent to a uh, group exhibition and it, it really does speak to the power that technology impacted the entire arts community music art everything culture 
I love it. And the cradle boards. She yeah. made this, hey? She started it. I don't think she finished it on her own. She had a friend finish it. Um, the moccasins as well are all... Well, I guess if her process is to start and carry things on for many, many years until they're done, <laughs> this is not something you could do that with if it's for your baby. Right. right. <laughs> I, I think it speaks more to the impact of motherhood on somebody's <laughs> life. Yeah. I think it does I started, matter. can you please yes. help me finish this? Yes. It's so true. My grandmother always said that, that that's like... A, economic equilibrium is motherhood because it doesn't matter <laughs> isn't that true that's that's yeah. valuable that is so true hey? yeah so if she's this just um this really made me feel so uh trusted and and it had a huge impact on me as far as her encouragement for me to continue with this exhibit and developing it and and creating something that she would be really, really proud mm -hmm. that we had done because she really gave of herself. There were personal photos, family photos, mm -hmm. things that she really gave of herself to, to explain and to put every piece in context for us. And it was... How did this all come to be? Um, it's kind of a... A little bit of a story. It, it slowly evolved. Uh, Jill and Buffy, they had asked me to, to do the documentation and to organize her art portfolio. Um, she'd been through a few different management uh, that didn't necessarily give it the time and energy that it deserved. Mm. And also there was a period of time when digital art was not considered real art at all right and so that was a battle like it's very difficult to to show your pieces in a way that does them justice if you're dealing with entities that don't really believe it's art right. and that have these preconceived constructs of what the definition of visual art is it's an uphill battle but it we really wanted to give it another try and We've got a lot of things going on. There's, there's so much interest in the fact that she just turned 80. Mm -hmm. And she's, you know, she's had the longevity that she's shown in her career on every discipline. It's so impressive. But really what we need to reflect on is the things that got kind of tossed by the wayside or, or just not given as much credit hmm. as was due. And this is one of them, her her impact and her use of digital art to reach out to a new audience where no one else had ever And you grabbed to. it, and it's like, let's put it under one roof. People can also <laughs> see this online though, right? I mean, not everybody's gonna be able to come to Winnipeg and see this um, right. in person. So where would people, if they wanted to know, see more of you know, any of the individual pieces or get some more information, how would people go about doing that? Well, thankfully we have a really wonderful venue, Urban Shaman uh, Contemporary Aboriginal Art Gallery. And they have a great technician here, and he's been documenting it and, and compiling it into a virtual gallery for us. And many thanks, too, to Ace Art Inc., because they are the reason why we actually found a space. And they partnered with Urban Shaman so we could bring this here with all of the expense and extra, you know, extra precautions for keeping everything safe and, yeah. and bringing it to the right uh, people to bring it forward publicly through the internet, through all of these interviews and, and wonderful media pieces. It's really vital that we, we lend some credit to the partners because without them, I, we would not have been able mm -hmm. to, to find a, an appropriate place for it and to do it so quickly. So that was really How amazing. How long is it on for here? It's here until March 5th, March so 5th. we'll have time. Just some time. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe COVID will be done by then. <laughs> I think that's, that's something we've been saying for a very I long time. Two years, yeah. But I don't, wouldn't it be nice to see, like, in the older yes. days where you would have it packed, you know, yeah. shoulder to shoulder well, and definitely. enjoying it with a big group of people? I mean, we appreciate seeing it, you know, in the small group too, but it, those good old times where you would see other people's reaction to what they're seeing and enjoying it and being immersed in it. Yeah, there's definitely been a lack of fanfare, <laughs> which yeah. is unusual. That's, you know, that can be said for everything, yeah. uh, you know, post-19, or, or 2019, I think, right? Lack, just general lack of fanfare.
Well, we're thankful that you took us on a tour here to show us some of this, and people can find uh, some more online on yeah. Urban Shaman's website. UrbanShaman.org. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks so much for coming through with me. Thanks for having us. I just love this so much. Oh, my gosh. And it glistens like it's shiny. Do you see like, yeah. the facets? It's so beautiful.